a Wikividi documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Burj Khalifa The Burj Khalifa, known as the Burj Dubai before its inauguration, is a megatall skyscraper in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, with a total height of 829.8 meters and a roof height of 828 meters. The Burj Khalifa has been the tallest structure in the world since its topping out in late 2008. Persiantly it is also called Burj Al Arab for being the tallest building in United Arab Emirates. It was later named Burj Khalifa on the third anniversary in 2011. Construction of the Burj Khalifa began in 2004, with the exterior completed five years later in 2009. The primary structure is reinforced concrete. The building was opened in 2010 as part of a new development called Downtown Dubai. It is designed to be the centerpiece of large-scale, mixed-use development. The decision to construct the building is reportedly based on the government's decision to diversify from an oil-based economy and for Dubai to gain international recognition. The building was originally named Burj Dubai, but was renamed in honor of the ruler of Abu Dhabi and President of the United Arab Emirates, Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Abu Dhabi and the UAE government lent Dubai money to pay its debts. The building broke numerous height records including its designation as the tallest tower in the world. Burj Khalifa was designed by Adrian Smith, then of Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, whose firm designed the Willis Tower and One World Trade Center. Haider Consulting was chosen to be the supervising engineer, with Nor Group Consultants International Limited chosen to supervise the architecture of the project. The design is derived from the Islamic architecture of the region, such as in the Great Mosque of Samara, the Y-shaped tripartite floor geometry is designed to optimize residential and hotel space. A buttressed central core and wings are used to support the height of the building. Although this design was derived from Tower Palace 3, the Burj Khalifa's central core houses all vertical transportation, with the exception of egress stairs within each of the wings. The structure also features a cladding system which is designed to withstand Dubai's hot summer temperatures. It contains a total of 57 elevators and 8 escalators. Critical reception to Burj Khalifa has been generally positive, and the building has received many awards. There have been complaints concerning migrant workers from South Asia who were the primary building labor force. These center on free market wages deemed by third parties to be insufficient. Several instances of suicides have been reported. Development Construction began on 6 January 2004, with the exterior of the structure completed on 1 October 2009. The building officially opened on 4 January 2010, and is part of the new 2 square kilometers development called Downtown Dubai at the first interchange along Sheikh Zayed Road, near Dubai's main business district. The tower's architecture and engineering were performed by Sufi and Al Jabari of Chicago, with Adrian Smith as chief architect and Bill Baker as chief structural engineer. The primary contractor was Samsung CNT of South Korea. The tower's construction was done by the construction division of Al Gwar Investment Group. Conception Burj Khalifa was designed to be the centerpiece of a large-scale, mixed-use development that would include 30,000 homes, 9 hotels, 3 hectares of parkland, at least 19 residential towers, the Dubai Mall, and the 12 hectares artificial Burj Khalifa Lake. The decision to build Burj Khalifa is reportedly based on the government's decision to diversify from an oil-based economy to one that is service and tourism-based. According to officials, it is necessary for projects like Burj Khalifa to be built in the city to garner more international recognition, and hence investment. He wanted to put Dubai on the map with something really sensational said Jackie Josephson, a tourism and VIP delegations executive at Nakhil Properties. The tower was known as Burj Dubai until its official opening in January 2010. It was renamed in honor of the ruler of Abu Dhabi and President of the United Arab Emirates, Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Abu Dhabi and the federal government of UAE lent Dubai tens of billions of USD so that Dubai could pay its debts. Dubai borrowed at least $80 billion for construction projects. In the 2000s, Dubai started diversifying its economy, but it suffered from an economic crisis in 2007-2010.
leaving large-scale projects already in construction abandoned. History of height increases There are unconfirmed reports of several planned height increases since its inception, originally proposed as a virtual clone of the 560 meters Grollo Tower proposal for Melbourne, Australia's Docklands waterfront development. The tower was redesigned by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, Marshall Strabala, and Som Architect who worked on the project until 2006, in late 2008 said that Burj Khalifa was designed to be 808 meters tall. The architect who designed it, Adrian Smith, felt that the uppermost section of the building did not culminate elegantly with the rest of the structure, so he sought and received approval to increase it to the current height. It has been explicitly stated that this change did not include any added floors, which is fitting with Smith's attempts to make the crown more slender. Imar Properties announced on 9 June 2008 that construction of Burj Khalifa was delayed by upgraded finishes and would be completed only in September 2009. An Imar spokesperson said that Tihi luxury finishes that were decided on in 2004, when the tower was initially conceptualized, is now being replaced by upgraded finishes. The design of the apartments has also been enhanced to make them more aesthetically attractive and functionally superior. A revised completion date of 2 December 2009 was then announced. However, Burj Khalifa was opened on 4 January 2010, more than a month later. Architecture and Design The tower was designed by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, who also designed the Willis Tower in Chicago and the One World Trade Center in New York City. Burj Khalifa uses the bundled tube design of the Willis Tower, invented by Faiz Lerman Khan. Proportionally, the design uses half the amount of steel used in the construction of the Empire State Building thanks to the tubular system. Drive Khan's contributions to the design of tall buildings have had a profound impact on architecture and engineering. It would be difficult to find any worldwide practices in the design of tall buildings that have not been directly or indirectly influenced by his work. Its design is reminiscent of Frank Lloyd Wright's vision for the Illinois, a mile-high skyscraper designed for Chicago, as well as Chicago's Lake Point Tower. According to Marshall Stribala, a SOM architect who worked on the building's design team, Burj Khalifa was designed based on the 73-floor Tower Palace III, an all-residential building in Seoul. In its early planning, Burj Khalifa was intended to be entirely residential, subsequent to the original design by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill. Imar Properties chose Haida Consulting to be the supervising engineer with Nor Group Consultants International Limited chosen to supervise the architecture of the project. Haida was selected for their expertise in structural and MEP engineering. Haida Consulting's role was to supervise construction certify SOM's design, and be the engineer and architect of record to the UAE authorities. NOR's role was the supervision of all architectural components including on-site supervision during construction and design of a six-story addition to the office annex building for architectural documentation. NOR was also responsible for the architectural integration drawings for the Armani Hotel included in the tower. Imar Properties also engaged GHD an international multidisciplinary consulting firm, to act as an independent verification and testing authority for concrete and steel work. The design is derived from Islamic architecture. As the tower rises from the flat desert base, there are 27 setbacks in a spiraling pattern, decreasing the cross section of the tower as it reaches toward the sky and creating convenient outdoor terraces. These setbacks are arranged and aligned in a way that minimizes vibration wind loading from eddy currents and vortices. At the top, the central core emerges and is sculpted to form a finishing spire. At its tallest point, the tower sways a total of 1.5 meters. The spire of Burj Khalifa is composed of more than 4,000 tons of structural steel. The central pinnacle pipe weighs 350 tons and has a height of 200 meters. The spire also houses communications equipment. This 244-meter spire is widely considered vanity height, since very little of its space is usable. Without the spire, Burj Khalifa would be merely 585 meters tall. This was reported in a Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat study, which notes that the empty spire could be a skyscraper on its own. Such a skyscraper, if located in Europe, 
would be the 11th tallest building on that continent. In 2009, architects announced that more than 1,000 pieces of art would adorn the interiors of Burj Khalifa, while the residential lobby of Burj Khalifa would display the work of Joan Plenser. The cladding system consists of 142,000 square meters of more than 26,000 reflective glass panels and aluminium and textured stainless steel spandrel panels with vertical tubular fins. The architectural glass provides solar and thermal performance as well as an anti-glare shield for the intense desert sun, extreme desert temperatures and strong winds. In total the glass covers more than 174,000 square meters. The exterior temperature at the top of the building is thought to be 6 degrees Celsius cooler than at its base. A 304-room Armani Hotel, the first of four by Armani, occupies 15 of the lower 39 floors. The hotel was supposed to open on 18 March 2010, but after several delays, it finally opened to the public on 27 April 2010. The corporate suites and offices were also supposed to open from March onwards. Yet the hotel and observation deck remain the only parts of the building which were open in April 2010. The sky lobbies on the 43rd and 76th floors house swimming pools. Floors through to 108 have 900 private residential apartments. An outdoor zero-entry swimming pool is located on the 76th floor of the tower. Corporate offices and suites fill most of the remaining floors except for a 122nd, 123rd and 124th floor where the Apt Atmosphere restaurant, Sky Lobby and an indoor and outdoor observation deck are located respectively. In January 2010, it was planned that Burj Khalifa would receive its first residence from February 2010. A total of 57 elevators and 8 escalators are installed. The elevators have a capacity of 12 to 14 people per cabin. The fastest rising and descending at up to 10 meters per second for double-deck elevators. However, the world's fastest single-deck elevator still belongs to Taipei 101 at 16.83 meters per second. Engineers had considered installing the world's first triple-deck elevators, but the final design calls for double-deck elevators. The double-deck elevators are equipped with entertainment features such as LCD displays to serve visitors during their travel to the observation deck. The building has 2,909 stairs from the ground floor to the 160th floor. Plumbing Systems The Burj Khalifa's water system supplies an average of 946,000 liters of water per day through 100 kilometers of pipes. An additional 213 kilometers of piping serves the fire emergency system, and 34 kilometers supplies chilled water for the air conditioning system. The wastewater system uses gravity to discharge water from plumbing fixtures, floor drains, mechanical equipment and storm water. To the city municipal sewer. Air conditioning. The air conditioning has been provided by Volters. The air conditioning system draws air from the upper floors where the air is cooler and cleaner than on the ground. At peak cooling times, the tower's cooling is equivalent to that provided by 13,000 SD of melting ice in one day, or about 46 megawatts. Water is collected via a condensate collection system and is used to irrigate the nearby park. Window cleaning. To wash the 24,348 windows, totaling 120,000 square meters of glass, the building has three horizontal tracks which each hold a 1,500 kg bucket machine, above level 109, and up to tier 27, traditional cradles from davits are used. The top of the building is cleaned by a crew who use ropes to descend from the top to gain access. Under normal conditions, when all building maintenance units are operational, it takes 36 workers 3 to 4 months to clean the entire exterior facade. Unmanned machines will clean the top 27 additional tiers and the glass spire. The cleaning system was developed in Melbourne, Australia at a cost of 8 million Australian dollars. The contract for building the state-of-the-art machines was won by Australian company Cox Gomil, a manufacturer of building maintenance units. The Dubai Fountain Outside, Wet Enterprises designed a fountain system at a cost of DH 800 million. Illuminated by 6,600 lights and 50 colored projectors, 
It is 900 feet long and shoots water 500 feet into the air, accompanied by a range of classical to contemporary Arabic and world music. It is the world's second largest choreographed fountain. On 26 October 2008, Amar announced that based on results of a naming contest the fountain would be called the Dubai Fountain. Observation Deck An outdoor observation deck, named at the top opened on 5 January 2010 on the 124th floor, at 452 meters. It was the highest outdoor observation deck in the world when it opened, although it was surpassed in December 2011 by cloud top 488 on the Canton Tower, Guangzhou at 488 meters. Burj Khalifa opened the 148th floor sky level at 555 meters once again giving it the highest observation deck in the world on 15 October 2014. This was until the Shanghai Tower opened in June 2016, with an observation deck at a height of 561 meters. The 124th floor observation deck also features the Electronic Telescope, an augmented reality device developed by GSMPRJCT Degrees of Montreal, which allows visitors to view the surroundings landscape in real time, and to view previously saved images such as those taken at different times of day or under different weather conditions. To manage the daily rush of sightseers, visitors are able to purchase tickets in advance for a specific date and time and, at a 75% discount on tickets purchased on the spot. On 8 February 2010, the observation deck was closed to the public after power supply problems caused an elevator to become stuck between floors, trapping a group of tourists for 45 minutes. Despite rumors of the observation deck reopening for St. Valentine's Day, it remained closed until 4 April 2010. During low tides and clearness, people can see the shores of Iran from the top of the skyscraper. Burj Khalifa Park Burj Khalifa is surrounded by an 11 hectares park designed by landscape architects SWA Group. Like the tower, the park's design was based on the flower of the Hymenocallus, a desert plant. At the center of the park is the water room, which is a series of pools and water jet fountains. Benches and signs incorporate images of Burj Khalifa and the Hymenocallus flower. The plants are watered by water collected from the building's cooling system. The system provides 68 million liters annually. Wet Enterprises, who also developed the Dubai Fountain, developed the park's six water features. Construction The tower was constructed by Samsung CNT from South Korea, who also did work on the Petronas Twin Towers and Taipei 101. Samsung CNT built the tower in a joint venture with B6 from Belgium and Arab Tech from UAE. Tanner is the project manager on the main construction contract. Under UAE law, the contractor and the engineer of record, Haida Consulting, is jointly and severally liable for the performance of Burj Khalifa. The primary structure is reinforced concrete. Puts Maester created a new, super high-pressure trailer concrete pump, the BSA 14000 SHPD. For this project, Burj Khalifa's construction used 330,000 cubic meters of concrete and 55,000 tons of steel rebar, and construction took 22 million man-hours. In May 2008 Puts Maester pumped concrete with more than 21 MPa ultimate compressive strength of gravel that would surpass the 600 meters weight of the effective area of each column, from the foundation to the next fourth level, and the rest is by metal columns jacketed or covered with concreted. To a then world record delivery height of 606 meters, the 156th floor, three tower cranes were used during construction of the uppermost levels each capable of lifting a 25-ton load. The remaining structure above is constructed of lighter steel. In 2003, 33 test holes were drilled to study the strength of the bedrock underlying the structure. Weak to very weak sandstone and siltstone was found just meters below the surface. Samples were taken from test holes drilled to a depth of 140 meters, finding weak to very weak rock all the way. The study described the site as part of a seismically active area. Over 45,000 cubic meters of concrete, weighing more than 110,000 tons were used to construct the concrete and steel foundation, which features 192 piles. Each pile is 1.5 meter diameter x 43 meters long, 
buried more than 50 meters deep. The foundation is designed to support the total building weight of approximately 450,000 tons. This weight is then divided by the compressive strength of concrete of which is 30 megapascals which yield a 450 square dot meters of vertical normal effective area which then yield to a 12 meters by 12 meters dimensions. A cathodic protection system is in place under the concrete to neutralize the groundwater and prevent corrosion. The Burj Khalifa is highly compartmentalized, pressurized, air-conditioned refuge floors are located approximately every 35 floors where people can shelter on their long walk down, to safety in case of an emergency or fire. Special mixes of concrete are made to withstand the extreme pressures of the massive building weight. As is typical with reinforced concrete construction, each batch of concrete used was tested to ensure it could withstand certain pressures. Ktu Group, working for some, conducted the creep and shrinkage testing critical for the structural analysis of the building. The consistency of the concrete used in the project was essential. It was difficult to create a concrete that could withstand both the thousands of tons bearing down on it and Persian Gulf temperatures that can reach 50 C. To combat this problem, the concrete was not poured during the day. Instead, during the summer months, ice was added to the mixture, and it was poured at night when the air is cooler and the humidity is higher. A cooler concrete mixture cures evenly throughout, and is therefore less likely to set too quickly and crack. Any significant cracks could have put the entire project in jeopardy. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?